Hi, my name is Daniel Rogi. I'm a controls engineer for Tormach, and I'm also responsible for a fair amount of the PathPilot development. PathPilot is our control software. Today we're going to be going over um, Chapter 5 in the user manual, making our first part with PathPilot. So, um, this chapter covers everything you need just to make your very first part. Um, we go through a tutorial that involves making a little block of wood with a shallow circular pocket in it and the letters P, C, and C engraved into the bottom of it. And to make that part, we use the conversational screens, the uh, circular pocket routine and the engraving routine. So to begin, you'll need a work piece. Uh, recommend just a two by four. You're certainly welcome to use anything you want. You might have to vary your speeds and feeds if you're using a material other than wood. Um, in addition, you'll need two tools. One is a 3 8 inch end mill, and the other is a 1 8 inch end mill. And we'll call the 3 8 inch end mill tool one, and the 8 inch end mill tool two. So to start, <clears throat> we'll turn the machine on, twisting the e-stop to the out position, pressing the green button. If you uh, don't have an enclosure, your machine will look a little more like this. The next step after you turn the machine on is to reference it. You bring it out of reset by clicking the flashing red reset button. And then we'll go ahead and reference uh, X, Y, and Z axes. You can press those buttons in any order you wish. It's fairly common to reference Z first, though. Uh, it's a good practice because it's bringing the spindle up out of the way. If we had been lower down, uh, you know, referencing them all at one time could have crashed the spindle into the fourth axis that I have there. All right, so the machine is referenced now. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, establish a Z work offset for this piece. Um, there's a separate video online uh, that covers work offsets in detail, but the basic idea is that the machine thinks of its coordinates in terms of machine position, which is dif distance from the reference switches, whereas the operator wants to think of the workpiece in terms of uh, coordinates local to the workpiece itself. So uh, common zero points for a workpiece, a lot of times you'll see machinists program um, zero right in the center of the workpiece, so we could call this 0, 0, 0, right there in the center, x, y, z, 0. Or a lot of times back left corner is used. Um, often if I have a workpiece that's already had some work done on it, maybe I'm flipping the workpiece over to machine on the other side, I might use uh, a feature of the workpiece like a hole or a circular boss that's easy to touch off to or swing in with the dial test indicator. I might use that as the workpiece 0. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the center of the workpiece here. So, you can see here in our block, we're going to be pretty approximate. We're just doing something in wood here. I'll go ahead and call this X0, Y0, Z0. And I have to tell the machine exactly where that is. And that concept, the idea that the machine thinks of itself in terms of uh, the distance from the reference switch, it thinks of that as its coordinates, whereas we think of, uh, you know, coordinates local to the workpiece, that relationship is known as work offsets. And for more information on that, you'll want to have a look at the video on work offsets. The following is a simple procedure. I'm going to go ahead and set the Z offset here first. <coughs> I'm jogging the machine here with the jog shuttle, but you could use a keyboard, you could use any other uh, jogging you want to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jog this down until the uh, spindle nose with no tool in it kisses off the top of the workpiece. And as I get close here, maybe I'll put a piece of paper between the, uh, between the workpiece and the spindle, and I'll start stepping here. And I'm just going to keep going down until the paper binds up. <clears throat> so we can see from looking here that the machine is actually 12.2567 inches down from the Z position. But if we were to program code that said all our Z values were minus 12 point something, 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 that would be very inconvenient for us. We'd rather, um, we'd rather tell the machine that this is zero. So we'll do that by pressing the zero Z button here. 
and now the machine views its current Z position as the zero. Now I wanna, I wanna remind you of two important things here. One is the machine has no tool in the spindle and it's been told that there's no tool in the spindle. So here we see T0 is in the tool DRO and because we have no tool in the spindle, the active tool length is zero. That's very important information for the system to have. If we lied to it and said tool six was in the spindle, tool six here has a tool length, somebody else was using tool six measured off of two and a half inches, you'll see, look, that Z zero point would be incorrect if it thought that it had tool six in the spindle, but in fact didn't have tool six in the spindle. So it's, it's important before you set the work, if you're gonna set the work Z zero point by touching off an empty spindle to a workpiece, you wanna make sure there's no tool in there. So that's how we got our Z zero. To get your X, Y zeros, if I were machining something other than just a piece of wood, if I were being accurate, I might use something like a hammer or um, a wiggler edge finder. Um, any of those tools uh, would work great for finding X, Y zeros. And we cover that in, a, in another video on work offsets. But for now, I'm just gonna get close. I'll go ahead and and put tool one in the machine. I think it's a good practice anytime you put a tool in the machine to tell it what tool you've put in the machine. So we have tool one in the machine now. And I'll just use tool one to get about, about close here. So if you can see. That to me looks like we're approximately where I drew that X. So at this point, I, I want to go ahead and zero out the X and Y axes. So I'll click the zero X button and the zero Y button. And now we have, now we have a condition where um, if, let's say, we were somewhere else, if, if I wanted to go to that zero point, because we've set it now, I could just type in G zero x0, y0, c0, and it'll go right down to spindle nose right on top of the, the work piece there. It's going to go exactly to where we had it before. So now that we've set up x0, y0, z0 to be the top center of that uh, work piece, I'm going to go ahead and touch off my tools. So um, we're using two tools for this routine. Um, we want to measure these tools beforehand, otherwise we'd have to stop the program in the middle and touch them off. Um, there are a number of ways you can do this. It's covered in, the, in, in another video on tool offsets. We could use uh, a height gauge and measure them and manually enter the, the values into the screen. But um, the manual talks about doing it, assuming, it we don't have, assuming we don't have that piece of equipment. So we'll use the machine itself to measure these tool lengths off. Put tool one back in the machine. Got to remember to tell it tool one is in the machine. It doesn't know that unless I tell it. And I'm going to go ahead and jog it on down. So I'll use the same method here. I'm moving it down until the, the paper binds. So at this point, we know that that tool is uh, just kissing off the, the Z0 surface. I'm going to go over to the offset screen here. And I'll type in, I don't know, the thickness of the paper, 0.003, 3,000. And I'll go ahead and click Touch Z. Length has been entered in, in the tool table. While we're at it, we could go ahead and fill in a description. Call this a 3 8 end mill. And I could fill in the diameter as well. Uh, it's a nice, uh, easy way to do this. It'll accept fractions, so I can type in 3 8 and hit Enter, and it'll convert it to 0 0.3750. So let's go ahead and repeat this process with tool number two. Remember, I change tools and make sure the system knows I have tool two active in here. And go ahead and enter a description: eighth inch and mil, and this is 0.125. And we'll go ahead and jog down to touch it off. Touch Z, and its length is now in the column. So I, if you're just starting out with CNC, I, I really recommend doing a little sanity check. Um, if we look here, it says the length is about three inches. 
and we look at this tool and we think, hmm, from here to here, is that three inches? If, if my length had said minus 10 inches, at that point, it's time to scratch your head and say, I did something wrong. So uh, you look at these values, if, if they look correct, that, that's great. If you didn't, if you look at them and they don't look correct, I'd, before you proceed, go on and, and uh, maybe watch this video again or read through the chapter um, again and find out what you did wrong. All right, <clears throat> so now we've got uh, two tools touched off. We've got the tool length centered in the tool table and we've got our work offset X, Y, and Z zero set for the part. Um, we can go ahead and, and start making the part. And now we're going to write the G code. First thing we're going to do is mill a three and a quarter inch diameter pocket uh, that's a hundred thou deep into the face of the workpiece. We'll do this with the three eighths inch end mill. And we'll uh, uh, follow that up by engraving the letters P, C, and C into the workpiece. We'll do that with the eighth inch end mill. So first things first, we go over to the conversational tab and we'll select circular pocket. There's a rectangular pocket as well, but we're going to do circular pocket for this. And um, I won't go through entering all the values. I think they've been entered correctly in. Uh, you can see them in the um, section five of the manual. But I will point out that um, these fields, you can hit enter to move between the fields. And the nice thing about using enter to move between the fields is if you accidentally mess up and type the wrong value in there, it'll check the value for you. It won't let you get away with something that doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> and you can even see in the status screen, invalid Y value. So, <clears throat> we've got these all entered in here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and I've given it a name, first part. I'll go ahead and click post to file. It asks me where I wanna save it. I'll just go ahead and save it here, first part.nc. And there's our pocket. Take a look here, we can, another little sanity check, the extents of the program, it says it's gonna go 2.78 inches in Y and 2.78 inches in, in X, and looks like it's gonna go from a total of uh, 100 thou above the part to 100 thou below the part, that seems about right. Um, you know, it's a 3 8 inch end mill, so 2.87 travel, that'll get us that extra, um, uh, extra we need for the, the three and uh, three and a quarter inch pocket, 3.25 pocket. Are you ready to run this? Yes, let's do it. We'll go ahead and press cycle start, but before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the max velocity down to zero. That is a good way to prove out a part, okay? I'm gonna sure. grab the slider here. It was at 100, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna move it down to zero. Then I'll press cycle start. And I'll start bringing it back up. If it starts doing something I don't expect, then I can move that max velocity slider back. So here we go. <clears throat> it had tool two in there, but the program wants tool one. We asked for tool one, and it's telling me insert tool one, and that's giving me the description, three eighths inch end mill and spindle. <clears throat> Get my max velocity back down to zero here. I'll go ahead and turn that down to zero. And I'll do a little dummy check here. It thinks that we're 0.6 inches above the part. We look like we're about 0.6 inches above the part. It thinks that we're at X zero and Y of 0.1875. At this point, I feel pretty confident. I can go ahead and ease the end mill into the part. And when it starts doing what I think it should be doing, I'll go ahead and bring the max velocity slider up to 100. So uh, we were just cutting wood there. Obviously, we could have been a little bit more aggressive with our feeds and speeds. We could have gone faster. We could have taken a deeper cut. But uh, 
because this is your first part um, with the mill and with PathPilot, we're kind of taking things slow. Uh, next on the list is creating the engraving G-code. So we'll go back to the conversational tab and we'll choose engrave. These are all values that you'll see have been entered in. Um, values in the manual. We're using almost the same uh, feeds and speeds, but we definitely want to change to tool 2. Um, the font, using free mono oblique. We're selecting uh, X uh, left justification on where the text is centered. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do a depth of cut of about 50 thousand below the workpiece. So instead of post a file, I'm going to click append a file, and this will add um, just the engraving code to the end of the pocketing code. And there we can see the PCNC letters over the pocket. Now it does look like the end of the P is going to sneak out, but remember this is showing the tool path, not the material that's removed. So the pocket was done with a 3 8 inch end mill, and it's actually going to go a little bit further out. Let's go ahead and give them both a try. So when I press cycle start, it will recut the pocket because we're starting from the beginning. And then it'll move on. It'll ask me for two, tool two. I'll change to tool two. I'll hit cycle start and we'll run that code. Insert tool two, eighth inch end mill in the spindle. Thank you for watching a video on how to make your first part with uh, PathPilot and a Tormach milling machine. Good? Good.